Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 40. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our Alpha N style fuel strategy. Now, our Alpha N is going to be termed for a throttle position based load input for fuel and spar timing into our fuel and spar timing calculations. Now, typically in a speed density operation, we use map pressure, which is a reliable source. But once we get into individual throttle bodies, extremely large camshafts, or extremely large single throttle bodies, we can have drivability problems because our fuel calculations and our spark timing calculations can't track properly to our map pressure movement. So we need to use throttle position as a replacement. We're going to be going over all the conditions and how to set this up within our max in this training tutorial. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our Alpha N style tuning strategy within our max ECU. Our Alpha N strategy is a niche tuning strategy we might have to implement if we're in a situation where we have poor drivability from using our map sensor as the load input to our fuel and spar timing calculations in our main fuel and spar timing tables. We'll find that within certain situations, we may want to replace our map sensor as our load input with throttle position because our map sensor can't either accurately track where we're at as far as the uh, manifold pressure goes, or we're finding we have a very unlinear relationship between throttle movement and our map pressure reading. So we'll find that we have a couple situations where alpha n makes a lot more sense than dealing with a traditional uh, speed density strategy where we run our map pressure as the load input to our tables. Let's go break this down a little bit. Let's talk about what we have here and understanding why alpha n is going to be needed in some situations. So the well, first thing we're going to do is go into here to ECU tuning. Let's go move all the way down to the bottom under tuning here. And we're going to find that we have fuel table, lambda table, ignition timing table. And we know that these are our main tables that we have for the raw fuel and spark timing calculations that are going on here. So looking at our main fuel table, we know that this table here is going to be a percentage of volumetric efficiency or percentage of cylinder filling that we have going on here. Essentially, it's an estimation of airflow that's entering the engine. And we want to make sure these numbers are right so we're representing the airflow properly. Now we do see here within the main VE table here, uh, the actual values are percentage VE, but the axes to the table here, it's based on map pressure coming from the manifold air pressure sensor. And then we find down here, this is engine RPM. That's going to be coming from a reading from our crank sensor. Now, when we're talking about uh, the general operation of an engine, we'll find that map pressure here is typically going to be sufficient for tracking the load registration as the engine operates. Um, typical engines with a mild camshaft, with a single throttle body, with a normal intake plenum on it, they'll find that they produce at idle pretty stable vacuum. And as we start to blip the throttle or drive and give throttle inputs, we have a relatively linear relationship between throttle angle and our manifold pressure changing. So if I'm at idle right now and I was blipping my throttle, we might find that the manifold pressure would rise and fall as I'm getting on and off the throttle. Now, if we have something like individual throttle bodies, we're going to find that the rate of change as I'm tipping my throttle plate of what the map pressure is reading is going to be completely unlinear to what the throttle plate movement is going to be. So if we have a single throttle body that's a reasonable size, 60, 70, 80 millimeter on most typical on most engines, uh, we'll find if we tip that throttle plate, it will have a relatively linear relationship between throttle plate movement and the estimation of airflow and the map pressure sensor moving. But on individual throttle bodies, for example, that is going to be unlinear. If I tip the throttle plate open or the, the individual throttle bodies, each throttle plate as they're on a common shaft, if we tip them open, we're going to find that the manifold pressure will almost instantaneously go to atmospheric pressure. It's going to go all the way up here to zero PSI. This is going to go back again and go up and down and up and down. And we'll find that as we're blipping the throttle, there's going to be a very large disconnect of what it's trying to track here for the fuel delivery against what the manifold pressure is saying as far as the load registration to the table. Again, we have an unlinear relationship between our throttle angle and our manifold pressure. That's going to be one situation that we definitely want to consider using alpha N for our fuel and ignition tuning strategies. Um, the second situation is going to be if you have an engine that has a radical camshaft installed. We produce very, very little engine vacuum. Now, if you take a look at idle here, we're seeing that right now the map sensor is showing something like negative 7.4 PSI. And that's not the greatest amount of vacuum. We'd like to see about negative 10, negative 8 PSI. That's typical vacuum on a mild, mild camshaft. But if we have a big, big cam installed, you may find that your map pressure starts to read really, really poor. You might see it's something like negative 1 or negative 1.8 or negative 2 PSI here at idle. In that situation, we're finding here at idle, we're essentially idling and these cell points here. We're very, very limited. Um, and as we start to drive, 
we're going to find that we probably don't pull much more than negative 5 inches of vacuum and we're going to be constantly just operating within this kind of very small narrow band operation of the fuel table. We're going to be giving up all of our very light vacuum area because the engine won't simply be able to pull that much vacuum due to the camshaft design. And we can obviously, if it's naturally aspirated, we won't be going in boost here so that would be eliminated. But we're going to have a very, very small operating resolution within the table because of the MAP sensor being that uh, very, very poor um, or the, the uh, translation between the drivability of where the engine's operating at and the map pressure, um, it's simply not going to produce a, a good resolution signal. And that's just because of the camshaft design. Um, in that situation, we would want to go and make sure that our load input is based on the throttle position rather than our map pressure because the map pressure is not going to give us enough resolution in the table here. These three rows, this is really not enough to characterize the drivability and wide open throttle operation and idle control we need more resolution. Now, yes, we could go in and start to define our breakpoints here in a much greater manner. We could start to spread these out and say we go negative 0.5 PSI increments. We can go from 0, negative 0 0.5, negative, negative 1, negative 1 1.5, and on and on and on. But that's still not going to give us enough resolution. You'll still find you have drivability problems. So very large camshafts can be a big, big issue using map pressure as the load input to our table. We'll find that we can't get repeatable and consistent fuel delivery, which will cause drivability problems. You'll definitely notice the engine doesn't drive very smooth because it's never going to be consistent. Um, we'll have one kind of last situation where this is probably the least common of all the, 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 the situations where you might need to consider alpha N. That's gonna be a very large single throttle body. Some, uh, some throttle bodies are made 90 millimeter, 100 millimeter, 140 millimeter, We'll find that when we run a very, very large throttle plate size, which would be the kind of the equivalent of dealing with individual. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.